Good morning and welcome to worship. It is the last week of summer, unfortunately, which means there are no more bread puns, but you do get Bob back. <laughs> if you're here on site, you should have received that uh, bulletin when you came in um, out on that front table. If you have the large print bulletin, everything you need is in your copy of the bulletin. If you have the smaller book fold bulletin, you will also need that hymnal that is in front of you that looks like this cranberry color. Um, the hymns are noted as ELW with a number that's up there in the high range. Um, those are going to be towards the back of the hymnal. Um, and the liturgy is noted as page number, and those are going to be towards the front of the book. If you need help finding anything, please just ask those around you or flag me down. If you are joining us online, that bulletin is available on our website, messiahoaklandnj.org. And you have the large print version, so everything you need is in that bulletin. Our prayers for this summer have been a practice of open-ended petitions. So we invite you during that time to share your prayers, either out loud or silently, or if you're online, drop those in the comments or the chat. And know that however you lift your prayers to God, God will hear them. If you're here on site, we offer three different ways to participate in Holy Communion. You can either have those prepackaged elements from your seats, or you can come up here to the altar rail. At the altar rail, you can either receive those prepackaged elements, there's grape juice on the bottom and a wafer on top, or you can receive an empty cup, which will then be filled with grape juice, and you will be handed a wafer. All options are available to you. And for those of you joining us online, all are welcome at God's table using whatever bread, wine, crackers, or grape juice that you have at home. Lastly, worship here is an opportunity for you to create and make meaningful. Stand when you want to stand, sit when you want to stand, sit, get up, dance around. If you're at home, go for a walk. Whatever way is meaningful for you to worship God this morning is good and holy, and we invite you to do that. That being said, please join me in a worship position for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw as near to us with grace in time of need, and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And here are these words of forgiveness. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called to the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. You may be seated. Noel, right? Do you know what this is? Can you say that louder for me? It's a paper chain. And I don't think that you have been here when we've talked about this paper chain, right? No, because this is just a small piece of it, right? Where's the rest of it? It's pretty vague, right? <laughs> so, grown-ups, what is it? Our prayer chain, God moments, and who can tell me what a God moment is? When something good happens, when you're reminded of God's presence, where you see God in the world. You with me? So every single paper chain that you see, all up there, people have written places and times that they've seen God. Isn't that cool? Because we can see God in everyone and everything, and sometimes it's a good thing. Like, uh, I see God in everybody who is here today, right? It's a holiday weekend. You could be at the beach. And we can also see God in difficult times, too. So not everything on here is a happy, but everything on this entire chain is a place that someone has seen God. So every month, we keep adding to this chain, and we keep sharing the ways that we see God. That way, everybody can learn, because we learn better in community, right? So, grown-ups, has anybody had a God moment? Have you seen God anywhere or in anything recently? And if you have one, Noel, let me know. Yeah, safe travels to and from a funeral. Certainly a God moment. What else? Yeah. Help from friends. Yeah, absolutely God moments. Anyone else? Yes, yeah, sorry, Sue. Rob's dad is with us today. We've also learned his name to Rob. Welcome, Rob and Rob. Makes it easy. There's a Rob sandwich going on over here. <laughs> Bob is back. Yeah, that's a God moment. And I have a God moment. Yeah. Just, just the, the, the music and the singing, it's all just a beautiful God moment to hear it all and bring such joy to my heart. To hear the music and the singing. Yes. We love praising God with music and dancing. Any other places that people have seen God this week or this month? Oh, 
on the funeral wavelength. I saw God in families reconnecting at a funeral I did this week. And again, safe travels for all those who are going to those. Uh, I saw God last Sunday because our skylight was uncovered and it was beautiful to have the sunshine. But I also see God in our property team who has recovered it because it leaks. So until we can get it fixed, we kind of have to keep it safe. So that's why it's a little dark. What do you think? Do you have any thoughts on maybe a place you've seen God? No, then that's okay. Because guess what? We're going to do this next month too. <laughs> and maybe next month you'll have one to add. So do you think you can help me? And you can say no. What our practice is, is every single person gets to take a paper chain. Do you think you can distribute the paper for me? Or do you want to pass? Thank you so much. You're such a good helper. So if you can just take this basket and just kind of give everybody a piece of paper or you can pass it around if you want them to take it and then take one home with you. And if you think of a God moment, you bring it back and we're going to add it to the chain. Does that sound good? Thank you so much for your help. You are a brave soul. <laughs> also, anybody tall who can attach this to the chain, I would greatly appreciate it. <laughs> the pile in my office has been growing because I, I cannot reach any of them. <laughs> so make sure you keep sharing those God moments. We're getting, we're getting closer to getting all the way around the sanctuary. I see we're being specific with our colors this time. I love it. <laughs> Peace be with you. I have a show and tell for today. Who knows what this is? A door hanger. Say that again, Blake. A coat hook. But what's maybe specific about it? <laughs> it does hang over a door. It looks like an anchor. I like that one. It's not quite the fighting octopus one. But it has two prongs, right? You can hang two coats on it. I love this image of a two pronged hook. When we think about laws and tradition, See, Jesus says that the greatest commandment is to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. Two prongs. Love God, love your neighbor. And so when it comes to a law or to a tradition or a practice, I like to ask the question of this two prong hook, does it help you grow closer to God? Does it help you deepen your relationship with your neighbor? If the answer is yes, go for it. If the answer is no, don't go for it. Because what works for one person will not work for another. And the task is to do what helps you grow closer to God and closer to your neighbors and not worry about anyone else. And this is challenging in all of scripture and still today. Now, in scripture, there are 613 commandments. We're familiar with 10 of them that are used to help us live in community. But the other 603, among many, many others, are designed to help us live in community, to help us worship God, to help us navigate the world, navigate our identity, understand who we are in this time and place. But not every single one of them is helpful to every single person or applicable at every time as we learn to love God and love our neighbor. So who can give me a rule or a law? Anything. Pick something. Driving on the right side of the street. <laughs> The correct side of the street for the country you live in. How's that? Thank you, Noel. <laughs> hey, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Leave it, leave it. 
We're having a color explosion in the sanctuary today. I love it. So driving on the correct side of the street for the country that you live in, does it help you love God or love your neighbor? It certainly keeps your neighbor safe. <laughs> Unless you live in New Jersey. <laughs> Sorry, you all know that's my <laughs> favorite thing to joke about. Um, yes, good, use it. What about another law or a rule or something? What comes to mind? Sue. Wear your seatbelt. Wear a bike helmet. Help you love God, love others. I think so, right? You're protecting God's creation. But laws aren't the only thing that we can use this for. Because laws are really just a stone's throw away from tradition and practices, from customs and beliefs that are passed from generation to generation. Sometimes traditions start as a law, sometimes they turn into law. But the same question applies to our two-pronged hook. So what is a tradition that you hold dear? Putting up a Christmas tree. Does it help you love God or love your neighbor? You personally, I'm just asking you, Alex Boyce. Yeah, it brings family together. It reminds you, right, you only put up a Christmas tree at Christmas because, of, you know, we, we celebrate the baby Jesus, right? If you didn't celebrate Christmas, you might not put up the tree. <laughs> what else? What's another family tradition or one that you personally and I'm willing to share? We're quiet today. It must be a holiday weekend. Well, here's a uh, tradition that I will throw at you. There's a tradition in scripture to fast, whether it's fasting for prayer, whether it's fasting in Lent. I'm asking you individually, if you were to fast, would it help you love God or love others? Does anyone say yes? Couple? I see a few brave head nods. Linda, no for you? Yeah. <laughs> brave soul over here admitting that fasting would lead to hanger, hanger would lead to fear, fear would lead to suffering. Yeah. Uh huh. Little Yoda for your morning. <laughs> so here's a great example. Tom, you said yeah. Right? That might be a practice that helps you love God and love your neighbor. I love that. Linda's like, no, thank you. <laughs> and that's okay. Because we can hold traditions knowing that they work for some and not for others. Because all that matters is what works for you. Because at the end of the day, a tradition matters in how we use it. Is it helping you deepen your relationship with God and others? I fasted one good Friday. Never again. <laughs> or does it allow you to deepen your relationship with your neighbors? In that moment, it did deepen my relationship with God. It did not deepen my relationship with my neighbors. But these traditions and rules and laws and the ways that we use this idea of the two-pronged hook will change and grow over time. This is what I think that Jesus is talking about in today's gospel. The Pharisees and the scribes are holding on to this law and this tradition of cleanliness. Now let me be clear, this is not just washing your hands after you use the bathroom. This is about ritual cleansing there was a held belief that you had to ritually cleanse to be holy. And the temple authorities in this moment are trying to use these traditions to divide people. They're trying to say, you didn't wash your hands, you can't sit with us. You are not welcome here. And they turn to Jesus, hoping that he is going to affirm and uphold this long held belief. 
And in turn, Jesus quotes the prophets and says, you abandon the commandment of God and you hold to human tradition. You are neglecting this love God and love your neighbor in favor of human tradition. Jesus reminds us over and over again in scripture that God's command is to love one another just as God loves you, to love your neighbor as yourself. The two pronged hook. And so we can ask ourselves the same question. Does the tradition of ritual cleanliness help you love God or love your neighbor? The answer is yes. Great. Do it. But don't let it divide you from others. Don't use it to make divisions and distinctions about who is in and who is out. Because when we draw lines in the sand to say you are in and you are out, Jesus steps to the other side and says, but what about? Jesus did not care about ritual cleanliness in this moment. What he cared about was community and teaching. Now don't get me wrong, tradition and law is good and important and holy. But when it becomes a concern or when it begins to divide us, when we hold too tightly to it instead of to God, we lose sight of where God is leading us and what God is asking us to do. In this moment, Jesus is inviting the temple authorities and all who are present to embrace something new and different. Change is scary and uncomfortable, but it is necessary and holy to find God all around you. Jesus teaches them that it is nothing from the outside that can defile a person. You can clean your hands all you want, but that dirt is not what defiles you. It is only what comes from inside that can do that. Your outward clean hands do not keep your heart clean on the inside. It is a beautiful and challenging idea. And at the same time, it affirms that it is from within that each of us gets to make a decision. We are influenced by the world around us, but ultimately, you get to decide. That's why that worked perfectly. You each had different things, and great, go for it. That's why I was so specific. Alex, does this help you? You have the power, not anybody else. You get to answer the question, does it help you love God or to love others? Because we believe in a God who defies expectations and human tradition. We believe in a God who says, I love you. When the world around us makes us question our worth. We believe in a God who says, my forgiveness and grace are abundantly and freely given for you. When the world around us labels us a failure at the smallest mistake. We believe in a God who breaks down the walls that divide us when the world around us continues to build them up. And so we wrestle with this two-pronged hook individually and together as a community. As we move towards relationships instead of divisions. And I like to use the words from the reading from James to guide us. When it comes to asking yourself, does this help me? Does this help others? Be quick to listen. Be slow to speak and slow to anger. Be doers, not just hearers. And rid yourself of the things that divide you from God's creation. Open your hearts and your mind, and you just might discover where God is already at work, inviting you to join in. Amen. So our hymn of the day is new to us. Um, for the time being, it's a beautiful hymn and we will do it again. Um, so I just wanted to let you know, I'm going to do the introduction to it a little differently. I'm going to play the whole melody through one time, because it's a little hard to find it when you're um, 
hearing the chords, because the chords are so beautiful, they can distract you from the melody a little bit as well. So one time through on the melody so we can kind of get a hang for it. And then let's just try our best and sing loud and deutlich, yeah? <laughs> to our cries. We lift these prayers to you out loud and silently in our hearts. God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. We thank you especially for the sustaining goodness of your creation, for the gifts of healing and forgiveness, for the gifts of relationships with others, for the communion of faith in your church. For what and whom else do we thank God out loud or silently? For family, for friends. God of grace. 